Hello everyone, I'm Agne. I'm Jack. And welcome to Hardware and Coffee. Coffee. Yes. In this video series, we're going to talk all things hardware development. We're going to dive into topics like uh, what to do when you have working prototype ready, how to find contract manufacturers, how to protect your IP. We will also dive into more technical topics about electronic and mechanical engineering, industrial design, design for manufacturing, hardware testing, and many others. And today we'll be discussing double design procedure, all the steps you need to take to complete electrical engineering design. Yes, actually many hardware creators skip this step uh, by getting an evaluation board or by outsourcing their electronic engineering. But if you're building your product from scratch and you're building it by yourself, you need to know these steps. Okay, step number one, defining functions. To start electronic design, first of all, you will need to define your product. Do you want to build a security camera, a smart watch, or a smart toy, or something else? Once you have decided which product you want to de develop, then you can start defining the use scenario, which basically means what things you want to deliver. Things like when people use your product, what kind of result they could get. This helps you to pinpoint the exact function that you, your product will need to have. For example, if you are making a home security camera, you probably want to have motion sensing functions to detect any large motion activity in the house. And once you detect any unusual activity, you probably want to have a wireless communication, so for example, BOE, to transfer the alert to your cell phone to alert you what kind of unusual activity happened in your house. Okay? Every electronic design needs to be powered. So it means that you will need to define how you want to power up your product. It's, it can be with a battery if it's a portable product. It can be using a power adapter if it's a stationary one. So that's something you want to define in this section. Step number two, selecting solutions. So in this step, you need to find electronic components that actually enable the functions you defined in the first step. Each solution, each electronic component uh, has many vendors. So basically selecting solutions is selecting who you're going to buy them from. Remember one important point, actually the best solution, the most expensive one, not necessarily is the best for your product. Mm. The main chipset is the most important component you will need to choose. Because functionality, firmware, software, interface, everything will depend on the main chipset. So for example, if you start developing your product on one chipset and then you decide to switch to another, uh, it will cost you a lot of time, effort, and money. So choose your chipset wisely. When you have decided on your main chipset, other step is uh, selecting electronic components for your other functions. So to minimize the sourcing um, effort, you can actually look at the reference design of your main chipset and there are going to be uh, components that are recommended for your chipset. But sometimes these components actually are too costly or they are not exactly what you need for your device. So in this case, you would actually need to find the components by yourself. Step number three, selecting materials. As guys, we, have, we are halfway done. We just selected our solution. Now we need to select the material. For each component, we will have uh, different grades. For example, consumer grade, industrial grade, automotive grade, space industrial grade. The higher grade is, the higher cost will be. So please pay attention to that when you're selecting the material. The main difference between each grade is the temperature range. For example, consumer grade chip can mainly only operate in the temperature range of 0 degrees to 90 degrees, where the industrial grade can handle from negative 40 degrees to up to 90 degrees. The grade selection will depend on who will be using your product. And then in the next step of the section, you will need to consider the uh, product size. And based on the product size, you will need to come up with the PCB size. Once we know the PCB size, then we will need to know what kind of package you want to choose to fit in on the uh, PCB size. Yes. For example, how we try to develop this uh, awesome ruler to show you all the different kinds of packages of the chipset. Yes, this is a PCB ruler that we have. And if you don't know what package is, it's actually um, on a PCB, these little things here and they all have names. 
Yes, it's some something like uh, SOT six, SOT twenty three, QFM package. All different packages cost you different, and you can find all those like package information on the data sheet. Yes, and usually the smaller packages will cost higher. But if you're making a complex project uh, product that is has to be really small, you need smaller packages. Step number four, circuit design. So as we have selected material for each of the components, now we can connect them together to know the correlation. At this step, we will also need to do some RLC, resistance, inductance, and capacitance uh, calculations to maximize the performance. First of all, uh, we need to select a software tool to draw the schematics for your circuit design. Um, and there are many tools available. There's uh, FreeTool, ExpressPCB, uh, Quadcept, Upverter, SparkFun, Eagle, SolidWorks, Allegro. We will give you a list in the slides, and you can choose any of them. Uh, when you have it installed in your computer, the next thing you have to do is to go to each uh, vendor, vendor's websites, vendors of your components' websites, and find the component model files. So the model files will help you draw the schematics. You have to upload the model file into your tools database. And after that, all you need to do is follow the data sheet and connect the lines uh, to each pinout of the components. Good schematics is very important uh, because it will be a good reference when you need to do debugging if there is some issue with your product. Step number five, PCB layout. We are almost done here and we are in the last step, which is the PCB layout. To design PCB layout and create GUBO file, you can use the same software tool that we mentioned for the circuit design. Unlike schematic, PCB layout is allocating the actual components to the exact location on the PCB and show how traces connect each component together. One thing to be noted in here is the placement is really important. Because sometimes components will create an interference to other components and cause the unexpected behavior. For example, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, they share the same bandwidth 2.4 GHz, so they will create an interference to each other. So in here, we need to be careful of that to avoid the interference of these two components, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. When you finish the PCB layout design, you will create a Gerber file. And the Gerber file is what the PCB service provider used to manufacture the prototype of your product. And now we have finished all the steps of the AA design flow. We know that the hardware creators actually spend a lot of time uh, during AA design sourcing the components. Mm -hmm. And actually these things are just few of the issues to solve when you're developing your hardware product. And at Hardware Track, we want to make your hardware journey uh, easier, smoother, and cheaper. And uh, that is why our partner, CC Port, and their leading China's component uh, distributor, they developed a special program. The program is called Program Faraday. And basically, it's uh, engineering consulting services to assist you on any component sourcing related issues. So if you uh, have any questions about component sourcing, you can apply for the program and they will help you out. How to apply and all the links going to be in the presentation and also in the links below video. And anyway, if you have any more questions, you can email us or send a message on HarvardTrack platform or ping us on social media. We will always reply. Okay, guys, that's all for the Howard and Coffee video. Thanks for listening and see you next time. Bye. Bye.